cab drivers. <laughs> we become the taxis. Taxis and everything. You know, if they want something, we got to do it. <laughs> You're right, man. Man, this, this is really it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Well, this is really an honor, man. I I really appreciate this. Uh, Thank you very much, man. It's an honor talking to you guys too. You know. Well, cool, man. I appreciate it. You know, the thing about it is, there there is one question I want to ask you first and foremost. Um, as far as the uh, NBC TV miniseries, The Temptations. Well, I can tell about. Talk about it. Do I now? I'll tell you about it. Okay. What I feel. Okay. What What do you think? Do you think it portrayed the Temptations as as you experienced it? Do you you think it? Start off by saying football. It was Otis's story. Yeah. And, and um, Otis is not the only member of the Temptations. Yeah. You know, uh, I lived it as well as he did. A lot, it was it was a well done story. I must admit. Yeah. If you got to remember, it was made for television. Yeah, that's true. A lot of the facts, a lot of the incidents, they were they were put in different orders to make certain people look like they were were, were geniuses. You know. Yeah. But it wasn't, by no means was that the real story. I think, you know, they, they, we have a, a, I have another book that I've read, a movie script that I've read, which is almost, almost close to being the real thing, which you'll probably be hearing for the first week. Okay. okay. I'm thinking about O.K. and that one, but the real story needs to be told. You know, uh, the story here and there about my brother's doing drugs. I mean, let's let's tell it like it is. We all did drugs someday. Yeah. You know, but but the, but the story should be some of us were 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 blessed enough to get off of the drugs and still remain a good part of society. Yeah, man, I agree. That's very important for the kids that have got off into that now and to show them that they can come back instead of showing everybody that hey, I never did nothing and I always tried to help these guys. Mm-hmm. But it was just a year that we were in. Yeah, you well, know, in the '60s, everybody smoked a joint or something, and you know that's all I'm trying to say. It needs to be real. Yeah, well, you know, story, story needs to be real. Uh, Melvin didn't die in his mother's house. It was a lot of the things. Like I said, it was well done, but it was made for television. Yeah, actually, a, a, a good friend of mine, uh, Bryant Corbett from our sister station, actually, right? he uh, told me that uh, that Melvin had a really, really kind of long, drawn out death in the hospital. Right, right. It was really. I mean, you know, it was it was real sad. I, I, I mean, he didn't he didn't mention the fact that, you know, Otis had got a replacement for him uh, while Melvin was living, and Melvin was so sad about that. Yeah. I never will forget. He called me one time and told me, he said, "Man, I can't I can't believe you know Melvin coming from Mobile." Uh huh. I mean, and he said, "I can't believe that he got a replacement. I'm not even dead yet." Man. You know, but all those things wouldn't have looked nice. Yeah. You know, as well as. Me and Otis was going through the legal problem. See, that started with Eddie, Eddie Kendrick, David Ruffin, and myself about the name. Yeah, that, that's another question. That takes me to my second question. There's a book out, and I think it's called, uh, and and like I said, a, another friend of mine told me about this, the, the Deliver Us from Temptation. Right, that's Otis's book. That's Otis's book? Right. Okay. That, that's what the uh, miniseries was based on. Oh, okay. See, really, they should have said this was a miniseries of one of the members' lives, how he depicted it. Okay. It shouldn't have been said this was the true story of the Temptations. Yeah. Because, you know, first of all, most of my brothers are not here to to uh, to dispute him. And I'm the only one that's here. And by some strange reason, they didn't have the decency to even ask me. Mm-hmm. And I think it was because of our ongoing court battle. Yeah, I understand. Because you know, I had a lot of, I, you know, 25 years give you a lot of insight. Yeah. I could have put a lot of things to light. Because the last 10 or 12 years were exclusively uh, between me, David, and Eddie. Mm-hmm. We threw it together. Yeah. Otis couldn't have told those years. The, 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 that's, that's again when they were two Temptations groups, right? Right, right. Otis couldn't have told uh, the things that went down. You know, like the last tour David did, uh, you know, all that kind of thing that was never brought up. How he, he sit down and confessed to me, you know, that his mother, he was an orphan. And, you know, it wasn't no reason to do drugs. But he, he kind of brought some of the things to light mm-hmm. of why he was like he was. Yeah. And that how some of the record companies loved him like that because of the simple fact that, you know, with him and being in that situation, mm-hmm. all you got to do is sign here on the dotted line and we continue to steal your money. Yeah. You know, they didn't want him straight. Mm-hmm. How he went to a Reverend Lewis Falcon and, and, and pleaded for somebody to help him. Yeah. That was never told. <laughs> 
Oh, but you see, that, that, that's a lot of stuff that really needs to be said. That's you know. what I'm saying. It needs to be brought out because all they left my brothers with was uh, they did drugs, you know, and, and they did alcohol. And, and, you know, it's really unfair. But yeah. doesn't go out like that, man. We were supposed to be the greatest group in the world. Well, I was about to say, man, that brings me to a statement I, I'd like to make. That the Temptations were like a powerhouse group with, yeah. with, with with members in and out. But the thing about it was was the secrets and all, all, the, all the, the hardships and all that was pretty much kept secret to a point until, right, right. until lately. You know, and, you know it, it was really because the company didn't want, us, they didn't want the public to really know. The real, the real problem with the Temptations was... You know, when we found out how good we were, and we realized that the other groups around the country who weren't half as good as us were getting paid more money. Yeah. And we, we, we became, you know, there was no reason for us to do drugs, of course. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, these some, are some of the reasons that should have been brought up. Yeah, well, you know, I, I while agree. We sit, we sit with the Beatles, and the, and the Beatles uh, told us that we were the number one group in the world, and these guys were, were buying islands. Well, are you serious? They told you that? Oh, yeah, in 1968, I'll never forget. They told us, you guys are the greatest group in the world, but we did. We had the greatest fame, but we didn't have the money. Wow, man. But then, then the problem came is when we really found out the money was being made. Yeah. But we wasn't getting the money. Man. So this, this is what led to a lot of the demise, the different singers, the changing members. It was always about the financial part. Yeah. You know, they had to just treat it, temptations right. Man, we would have went down. In fact, we probably still would go down as one of the, one of the greatest groups of all time. But I mean, it would have been a, it would have been really a different story. My brother's probably would have still been living now. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, that's that's really wild. That the fi- I did not know that about the financial. Uh, well, yeah. Well, that's the, that was uh, well, you know, Motown was a great company. I loved them. You know, they gave all of us blacks a chance. They gave us our start. But you got to realize what happened in Motown when we. When we first got to Motown mm-hmm. in the early days, it was like a family. It was a big family. Yeah, that's it was, right. It was a way out of the ghetto, man, which was great. Uh-huh. You know, you can sing, you can get a chance to go out. But see, what young singers didn't realize, and to the young singers that might be listening, you got to realize that there's two words. There's show and there's business. Mm-hmm. There's fame and there's fortune. Now, if you're not careful, you don't end up doing the show and you'll get famous. Mm-hmm. And the business and the fortune will will be handled by somebody else. Yeah. And that's what happened. Man. And the minute we found out, you know, about the money that had been made, we were, we were very, very despondent about it. Uh, it caused a breakup of certain members, caused members to leave the group. Uh, it, 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 it set, you know, we found out there were hundreds of thousands of dollars that were supposed to have came to us that didn't go to us. Well, man, let me ask you a question as far as, if, if, if you don't want to answer this, this is fine, but um, as far as David Ruffin, what, what was the tension between David Ruffin and Otis? Did Otis just did not like David? Did well, David have well, that big of an ego? Or? Well, the problem with that was, you see, um, Otis was not the singer mm-hmm. that, that David was. Yeah, exactly. David was, was, was the singer's singer. Mm-hmm. And David was, believe it or not, they talked about him in the movie about being drugged all out. Yeah. David was the one that was, he was smarter than most people thought he was. David realized, David, David got, became friends with the Mick Jaggers, the mm-hmm. Dave Clark Five, the, the, the Beatles. He hung out with these guys. Believe it or not, they talked about him in the movie about being drugged all out. Yeah. David was the one that was, he was smarter than most people thought he was. David realized, David, David got, became friends with the Mick Jaggers. Mm-hmm. The Dave Clark Five, the, the, the Beatles. He hung out with these guys. And so he started bringing back to us the figures that, that, that groups in our status was been making. Mm-hmm. Hey, Davis hey. came back and said, hey, man, so-and-so, who's not as big as us, they're making this. And then at the time, all the money was being funneled back to Motown, right? Yeah. We were getting a salary. No. Oh. So what happened, Motown, the, the, their, their, their best entity to keep the group going was to deal with Otis. Mm-hmm. Because, let me explain to you, if you're a singer and you got talent, you'll take a chance. Yeah. Because you can sing. Yeah. Well, you got that tool to work with. They, well, they, they, they went to Otis and told Otis, you can't do nothing else if they put you out. But if, 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 you, if you stick with us, 
we'll use you as the person to keep the group together. And I'm sure on the side, they gave him a little extra money. And we found out about it. It was really, 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 really bad, you know? Wow, man. That, that... So it kind of, it kind of, you know, we lost the trust. Barry Gordon and Barry Otis was having secret meetings. Yet and still, Dennis, David, Eddie, we were doing all the same. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's just like, you know, just like in a, in a radio station when one, you get a couple top jocks and one guy's back in the background and he's making all the money. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a strange story there. Well, let me it's ask the same you, type of story. Well, let me ask you uh, one thing, getting off of, uh, what, kind of getting off of the subject of this, but uh, in, in the recording of Papa Was a Rolling Stone that Norman Whitfield wrote the line, uh, 3rd of September? That was way out of line. L- I know, no, I, I really told Norman, if, you know, they, 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 they played it up for television. Uh-huh. It looked like me and Norman had a big dispute. Uh, that, in fact, I think they did that because they had to mention me somewhere in the movie. Yeah. They kind of tried to keep me out of the movie. You know, after, after all, they didn't realize, they didn't make mention that my first record, Cloud Nine, won the first Grammy for Motown. Exactly. Also, my, my the second and third Grammys were, were won by Papa Was Rolling Stone. All that happened in this incident was, I, when I came in, I heard it was the 3rd of September that they always remember. That was the day my father died. It just so happened that my father died on the 3rd of October. Oh. And I merely mentioned that to Whitfield. And they made a big thing out of it, you know. And oh. when I seen it on the on the screen, I said, "Oh my God!" You know, I said well, it was only about three seconds. You know? Yeah. I said, "Wow, man, what are you talking about?" He said, "It's just a record. I didn't know." And I'm sorry, Sam. That was never thought up. Well, man, that, that's interesting how that people can take it and turn it about like that. But you know, like it sells, it sells miniseries. Yeah, but you know, I, I honestly, man. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are like this, but they, they'd like to see the truth because what you're telling me is more interesting than what was on that film. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's, I remember the last 30 days when, when, when we went to, when we went to, David was heavy into cocaine, right? Yeah. When the last 30 days we went to Europe, uh, Ruffin, Kendrick, and Everett, we had a big gigantic tour over there. And over there in Europe, we could not get any drugs. Yeah. Okay? Okay. So finally, we got a chance to see a sober David Ruffin. David rode with me in a limousine for 30 days. He talked to me about his childhood, how him and Jimmy was left out on the curb. He was raised by, you know, he told me about his father. He told me one time, he said, Dennis, you you blessed, you got your mother and father. I went home and I kissed my mother and father uh-huh. after that because, you know, people don't realize how blessed we are when we got parents. Yeah, you're right. You know, and he told me all of the times that, that, that he wanted to stop and that all of a sudden, uh, when he got ready to go to a big important meeting, cocaine would just automatically be there. Somebody would come by and just give him some. Mm-hmm. Naturally, he wouldn't make the meeting, and decisions would be made without him. Man. Of course, when the decisions are made without you, they go against you. That's right. Am I right? That's right. Because so you... it was a lot of things that, that needed to be brought out. I, and I'm not condoning his, his use of drugs because that is, that's wrong as wrong can be. Yeah. But what I'm saying... I don't want him to be like like this is why I brought back the temptation review, man. Yeah. We're coming back, man. We we, we I brought I got a guy that sounds like David, uh-huh. Eddie, Paul, and Mel. Well I was gonna ask you that, you know, can we expect the, the voices, and, the and moves? The show, and you and you gotta remember, for twenty five years I was the guy that set the show. Yeah. I was the show general. Uh huh. So the show is basically like it used to be twenty years ago, man. Wow. And the reviews we've been getting have been so raised. Uh, we do some of the new stuff, but I basically go back to my repertoire. The songs that you made famous, I do. I do Cloud Nines, it's just my imagination, the Don't Look Back, Wish It Would Rain, Ain't Too Proud to Beg, Get about, Ready. How about Girl, Why You Want to Make Me Blue? Why You Want to Make Me Blue? Lord have mercy. You hey, the way you do the things you do, treat her like a lady. We even throw in a little bit of stage. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, you're making my heart beat a little fast here. Yeah, but I'm, what I'm saying, <laughs> I, 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 I tried to bring back as much as I could because it's really hard to capture the magic of the temptations. Yeah. But I brought it back as close as I could. And I'm the only one that could really remember because I'm the guy that actually set the show. Yeah. I'm the guy that picked the songs out for the show. The organizer of all the songs? I was the general, the stage general. Man. And that's what I'm bringing to Montgomery, man. I'm bringing the real Temptations back.
Well, man, that that's what we're looking forward to. I'm and we're you. looking forward to coming there. You know, we we just played Birmingham because they just gave us uh, a statue there. Uh huh. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, they got Eddie Kennedy's Memorial up on Fourth Avenue, and they got a statue of all. They got well, they got six of us on on the ground. I don't know why they left both out of the statue. But, oh. But but they got statues of Melvin, Eddie, David, myself, and Paul, and and it's such a it's beautiful to be recognized. You know, you, I can go there sometimes. And just, I mean, I was there and it almost brought tears to my eyes. Just to, you know, I'm still living. I'm the only one living. Yeah. And to see a statue, so it, it's a great, it's a great thing, man. Well, it kind of makes you just want to keep going on and on. And then, then coming to places like Montgomery, where my father, uh, he grew up down there in Montgomery. My mother grew up in Tuskegee. So you know, it's just like coming back home. I, I, I'm, I'm really from Fairfield, Alabama. Uh huh. But you right outside of Birmingham there. But you got family hop, skip, and a jump from here, don't you? Oh yeah, yeah. I got family everywhere. I got family in Opelika, all over, all over Alabama. Wow, that's that's three three places right close to here, man. You you are the roots around here, aren't you? Oh yeah, yes. It's 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 always good to come home too. Well, man. I, fact, what, what, when I when I was home the last um, for the for the for the unveiling of the uh, statue. I met some some of my family on my father's side. I did not even know. So I got new family there. The, you, oh, so you discovered more when you were here. <laughs> discovered more. Of them. <laughs> well, man, what, let me ask you another one. What is your favorite Temptation song of all time? Well, you know, I have quite a few. You know, well, for myself personally, I like a song for you. Uh huh. So there's some I sing, and I and it's, uh, it was a time they let me sing a ballad, and I really, really enjoyed the ballad because of the words that it said. Yes. You just have to thank everybody's loved one. That song I just have to thank about loved one. So many-